Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucky here. And today we're going to go over some more huge mistakes to avoid as well as some nice tips to take advantage of. Every time I think I know everything about this game, I find a dozen more really cool things that I didn't know about. So I'm going to share those with you guys today so that hopefully your playthrough is less frustrating and more fun. So let's dive straight into the first one. One of these things is when you go up to a chest like this one and you know the character that you're controlling is always the one you're controlling and therefore they have a tendency to fill up on loot quite a bit faster than the other ones. What you can do if there's maybe a particular particularly heavy item in here or maybe a nice heavy weapon or something is you can grab it and you can just put it on the character that you want to hold it. So if you know Gale down here has an empty inventory, you can just drag it and put it on Gale and then boom, there it is. It went straight to Gale's inventory and you don't have to like open this up and then redistribute as you're going along. It's a nice easy way to organize your inventory on the fly. Okay, so this next one is about the order that combat takes place. As you can see up here, you can see from left to right whose turn it's going to be. But another thing that you may or may not have noticed it shows you here all three of these people are eligible for their turn so if it made more sense to use maybe your buffer right and you wanted to go to the other character and you wanted to buff this character before they attacked instead of after they attacked you could switch to your buff character throw the buff on them and then go back to your dps character and lay out that attack right depending on what your party composition is you may or may not see this all the time so definitely keep an eye out for it up here because there's going to be a lot of times where maybe you want to throw one element on the ground with with one character and blow it up with another character and it's going to let you sort out your combos a lot easier rather than doing one with this character and waiting for it to go all the way back to the guy that was just before him when you could have just changed the order yourself that they attacked in just by simply clicking on their portraits up here the next one is really important and it may not be something that you're thinking about before I continue on that line of thought, are you one of the many people who wishes it was easier to find players to play with? Are you exhausted by your current lineup of social media apps being clogged by someone's aunt's political posts? If you fall into either of those categories, Z League is a fantastic app for you and it's a sponsor of today's video. It's a social app that is all games all the time. You can use it to find people to play with with its built in LFG system that lets you filter players by whether or not they have a mic, what language they speak, what age they are, so that you can find players you're comfortable with teaming up with to take down your enemies. Take Diablo 4, for example, it doesn't have a built in looking for group systems. So this is insanely useful for people looking to group up and clear nightmare dungeons or take down Uber Lilith. Even the activity finder can be filtered so that you're seeing the games you're interested in. You can also earn coins just by playing games and redeem the coins for items like controllers and keyboards. So use the link below to download the Z link app and you'll get 500 coins just for using my link down in the description. If you comment on one of my posts in the Z link app with the word Terial, I'll select the winner to give a Corsair keyboard and don't forget to hit me with a follow while you're there. Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the video. The next one is really important and it may not be something that you're thinking about and that is your save files. In this game right now I have two gigabytes of save files and I don't save nearly as methodically as a lot of you guys do. I don't have as many redundant backups. I think I've got mine capped at about 15 quick saves, right? You can set that lower. You can take it all the way up to 50. So if you are making it so that you have a lot of saves or you're saving really often, your save folder might be be upwards of five or even getting close to 10 gigabytes the later you get into the game, right? Are you a hoarder? So one thing I would advise is if you have a lot of save files, then go ahead and make sure you have the room on your hard drive. Make sure you've got some gigabytes free for the future saves. Otherwise, you might get yourself in a predicament where you go to save and your hard drive's full. And I think this is a problem that I've seen people running into where they were playing the game, they saved, it didn't save their progress, and they didn't realize until it was too late that it was because their hard drive had filled up from these large save files. Just take a peek at your available hard drive space. Make sure you're not in danger of filling up with one of your saves. To see the size of all your save files, simply right click on this, click properties, and it will tell you. The next one we're going to talk about is disguise self. This is a really fun spell that you're going to have access to, and it's one that you can take advantage of in more ways than you might at first think. One thing you can do with this is turn yourself into something like a little gnome, and then that's going to allow you to access places that are smaller than and your character can fit into. So go ahead and take advantage of that. If you see like a hole that your character can't fit through, then turn into a gnome and head on in there yourself. Also, another thing that you can use disguise self for that is really nice is when you go to speak with the dead, a lot of times they'll say, yeah, I'm willing to talk with someone, but not the person that killed me. And when that happens, you can go ahead and disguise self, change yourself into anybody else, and then talk to the dead person. And they'll go ahead and happily answer your five questions that you want to ask them. All right, this next one has something to do with the functionality of the game 
time when you're inside of a conversation with someone. So if you're in a conversation with someone and you're talking to them, you may or may not have noticed that you can actually change the character you're controlling while the character is out and about. So I can actually switch characters here. I can switch over to her. And while those two are talking, I can move this character over here and crouch. If they weren't in a cage, I could try to pickpocket them. There's a lot of different things that you can do, you know, whether it's just positioning because you feel like the conversation's not going well. You're about to answer a question that you feel like, oh man, if I don't pass this next dice roll, like this is going to be a fight. Uh, then you don't have to sit here and just stand there with all of your characters grouped up. If you didn't separate them before, you can easily separate them now by just go ahead and switch all your characters and say we wanted to spread out before this fight broke out, right? Easy to do. So that's just a nice little trick that you can take advantage of as well as, hey, if it's going really bad, you can just go ahead and attack them right from here without even finishing the conversation. Another one to be aware of is yet another function for the you can right click and you can examine enemies or you can hover over them and you can hold down T and you can examine them that way. And there's all the good information in here about their resistances and what they're strong against, what they're weak against, right? We know that. But another thing that you can use examine for is if you fight an enemy that has illusions of itself. And there's already a few fights within the first couple of acts where this is going to happen. So if you haven't run into one yet, the next time that you do, feel free to examine the illusions and that's going to tell you if it's the illusion or not because the illusions are not going to get some of the buffs that the real one will have. So you'll look for missing buffs down here and you know, it'll be one of those things where this one is not like the others. And if it has more buffs, it's probably the real one. If you're enjoying the video, be sure to like, subscribe, or comment. It helps more than you guys know. Thank you. Okay, this next one has to do with concentrating on spells. So just so you know, if you choose to put a spell out, let's say we put it right here. And now we've got this flaming thing right here. <laughs> oh, that's hot. We want this character here to be able to get by it without taking damage, right? Well, what we can do is at any time when we have one of our spells up is we can cancel it with this little X down here. So we would just tap that X to tell it to stop concentrating on that spell. And now it's gone. You can do that with that spell. You can do it with this one here. Any spell that requires you to concentrate and it'll stay there. Even after the battle's over, it might be still going, you know, and your characters might feel the sudden urge to sprint towards you and through that spell. Well, one easy way to prevent them from taking damage is just to go ahead and hit the X, unsummon it, which is a really convenient way to avoid that problem altogether. And the next thing we're going to touch on is alchemy. So at the top of your character's inventory up here, you've got an alchemy tab you click on that and in here you'll notice that you can craft potions for instance you can craft potions of animal speaking you can craft potions of healing and it tells you exactly what you'll need in order to craft these items so don't forget this is here you know if you find yourself running out of potions or maybe you want to take advantage of extra potions that have extra effects you can come in here and do that to see what it tells you you need it says we need salts and we also need suspension so in order to do this i would need to craft myself a suspension so i'd come down here to the suspension area Area. I'd pick one of these. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab a couple. And then we go back up to the potion of healing. Look, now we've got a suspension. It says any suspension. So we gave it some. We've already got the salt there and we craft the item. Boom, just like that. And you can come in here and you can craft grenades like this. You can craft coatings for your weapons, right? Lots of different things, elixirs, potions, potions of animal speaking. So definitely don't forget about your alchemy tab up here if you haven't used it yet. If you're like me, you're probably out there collecting every collectible in the game, including all of the alchemy ingredients that you find along the way. So put them to use. The next one's a quick, easy one. And that is that if you've got a wizard in the group like Gale himself, he can learn spells. So I don't know how to put this but kind of a big deal but don't forget about that you just come up here go to your spell book and click this button right here learn more spells and any scroll that you found and have on you you can go ahead and learn it does cost gold though so you know just a heads up there is a gold cost for each one that you learn as you'll see here if we click on these that gold cost starts going up cost 250 so far if we learn them all it can get quite expensive but if you've got lots to spend or if you found some cool spells don't forget to have them learn them once again that's in your inventory tab when you're on your wizard come here hit the spell book at the top 
and then hit learn spell. And this way you don't have to worry about running out of that scroll. Another easy one to overlook is if you are getting to the point in the game where you've got a lot of spells and you're moving your sliders around looking for the thing that you're trying to cast, just go ahead and hit this plus sign over here and make it bigger until you don't have to scroll, right? And that way you'll always be able to see all the things that you have access to, which can be quite handy if you ask me. Okay, this next one is actually hilarious. So what we can do here is we have a torch, right? We have a torch, it's burning, and and we can go ahead and put this burning torch inside of this barrel here, right? I've got two explosive barrels. I've got one smoke butter barrel, and then I've got another one. Now, this one has the lit torch in it. This one doesn't. So if I throw this one, nothing happens. However, if I throw this one that I put the lit torch in, it's going to explode. Oh, that's hot. So, <laughs> and it's a massive explosion, right? So if you're carrying around explosive barrels and it's taking you two turns to one, set them down or throw them, and then another character has to shoot a fireball at it or something, you could just let your strength character have the ability to launch fireballs of its own variation by throwing those lit torches into one of the barrels and throwing the barrel with the lit torch inside of it. I thought that one was hilarious when I found out about it. I hope you did too. Okay, this next one I almost feel a little bit bad about. We can come to Withers here, right? And we can give him some money and we can say, hey, can you help me change my class? We do that. So then the next thing I can do is sneak up behind him and try to pickpocket him. So we're going to choose to steal that gold, all of the gold that I've ever given him. So you can keep trying until you succeed. And he doesn't seem to care about all the times you failed. He now has no more money. We talk to him. He says, fate spins as long as it should. He doesn't even acknowledge that we just stole 800 gold from him. So, hey, if you've given him a lot of money, he's probably holding on to it. You can head back here behind him, wherever you are, you know, big pocket him and take that money from him. And he doesn't seem to care at all. I guess it kind of makes sense. What's a dead guy going to do with money? Okay, this next one is just a little key command that you can do in Baldur's Gate 3 that can save you a action or a bonus action. So typically jumping onto an object is going to cost you a bonus action and you might want to take advantage of that bonus action. So if you don't want to spend your bonus action getting up onto some boxes or maybe onto a ledge, what you can do if you're trying to get on these boxes is you can just shift click and your character will climb right on up there. So if you want to get onto a box or something as opposed to look at it or open it, you want to climb onto it, hold shift and then click on the box and your character will climb right up it. Alternatively, another thing you can do is right click and say climb on. Same and different means. This next one is a little bit of a cautionary tale. Let's say you have a character that is downed, right? They've fallen on the ground and you're going to throw a potion at them to pick them up. If they are on their last saving throw and you throw a potion at them, the potion can hurt them before it heals them. So if you throw it at them, you'll see there it says it missed. So what that means is it missed him. So it didn't do damage, but he did get the heal effect. Now, on occasion, when you go ahead and throw it at him, let's see if we can get it to do damage. Throw it at him again. There we go. It did six damage and healed him for seven. So he only got one health from that heal, which is obviously not what you want when you're trying to heal a party member with a potion. You know, so if you've got an ally that's low on health and you're trying to heal him, you're going to knock him down and then heal him. Or if they're on their last saving throw, that damage could be the thing that kills them, right? So better instead to throw it at their feet. If you have to throw it, throw it at their feet. This also makes sure that the throw doesn't miss because it's going to hit that nice big area all around them. So it's definitely going to hit your ally. Just be careful about throwing potions into status effects. Like so if you throw a potion into, let's say the ground was burning here. If you throw the potion into the burning ground, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to heal him. It's just going to evaporate. All right, this next one's about levers. OK, so we hit the trap. This room is about to explode with fire. Now, one of the things you could have done is disabled all these traps individually before you grab this thing. Alternatively, there is a button or a lever here. What you can do is you can shoot it. And now the trap is disarmed. And you're safe. You can grab your loot. Take that out of there. So when you're in a trap area or if you're in an area where there's a lever and it's just out of reach or you can't get there in a single turn, you know, feel free to just use your range attack on it and 
hit it that way. All right, guys, that's the last tip for today's video. If you've got any great tips to add, leave it down in the comments below. Some of the tips in this video today were ones that you guys had mentioned in the comments of my last video. So I went ahead and tried them out in game to confirm that they worked. They did. So I threw them in the video today. So thank you guys so much for leaving those great comments. I appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and a thumbs up. It helps more than you know. As always, a massive shout out to my YouTube channel members. If you guys want to become a channel member, be sure to hit the join button below for access to behind the scenes footage, an exclusive Discord channel and more. If you ever want to catch me live, I'm over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost, or you can follow me on Twitter at lucky ghost TV. If you're not sure what to do next, maybe check out one of my other Baldur's Gate videos popping up on screen right now.